Okay. Now, the Junko, um, for, I'll just say the Junko case. I cannot pronounce her last name, but I've heard of this case before, a uh, really, uh, <clears throat> really revolting case, but this video is it going into, it's, it's going into complete detail of the case. I only know, like, I only know, I've only heard of it before, so. One of the most <coughs> common suggestions to make a video about, and one of the most common questions on Q&As that I get, is what is the most horrific case I've ever heard of? It's a case that I'm sure a lot of you have heard of by now, but I'm not sure if you've ever heard about it in complete, gruesome detail. Yeah, I've heard of it, but like, not in detail. And I pray that this video doesn't go into too much detail, because I do not want to get banned. So please, chill out a little bit. This is not this is not a funny video. This is not gonna be this is not a funny case. So let me not laugh. Not laugh at the video, but like let me not be like upbeat because this is really not funny. I know this case isn't funny. Oh god, I've I've heard of it. It's really not funny at all. It's not to be joked about. Oh god. This is the story of Junko Furuta widely considered to be one of the worst crimes ever committed in human history. So for the love of God, please don't watch this if you're sensitive to extreme violence, uh, especially of the sexual variety. That is like really hard for me like to listen to. That is one thing that's really hard for me. It's stuff like that. Like hearing people go through something like that, like sexual crimes, like those are like the worst, honestly. So. Junko Furuta was a young woman who was born in Misato, in the Saitama prefecture of Japan. Her family consisted of a mother, father, an older brother, and a younger brother. She attended high school at a school in Saitama while working part-time at a plastic molding factory after school. She was saving up for a big graduation trip she was planning. She was all set up to start working at an electronics store after she graduated. She was fairly popular and well-liked by her classmates. She had great grades and was hardly ever absent. She was active, attractive, and attracted a lot of attention, which made some people jealous. She didn't drink, didn't smoke, and definitely never touched any drugs. This made her seem very lame in the eyes of the thugs around the school, the Yakuza wannabes. Oh, damn. I was about to say, like, I, I thought people in Japan wasn't really like on that but I guess I guess they are too one of the boys in this group was named Hiroshi Miyano he actually developed a bit of a crush <clears throat> on her and wanted to get physical with her he proposed this and she refused Hiroshi was a pretty big bully in this school one of the only ones actually involved with the younger members of the Yakuza at the time usually nobody dared defy him he couldn't believe that Junko actually had the gall to turn him down. Hiroshi did not take this well at all. Damn, could... what are the chances that she... Like, what does she even do, bro? Dang, the dude she rejected just so happened to be like some crazy dude that had ties to the freaking Yakuza in the 80s, bro. Like, damn, what are the odds, bro? Dang, what does she even do, Ooh, bro? She probably said it all nicely, him. too. He took it as a complete and total insult. He got together with a few of his wannabe Yakuza buddies and they all hatched a plan to get revenge on Junko. They would get another one of their friends to attack Junko and then Hiroshi would come to the rescue. After he won a bit of her trust, they could take her wherever they wanted. On November 25th of 1988, Junko was riding her bike home from her part-time job when an unknown boy attacked her and knocked her off of her bike. The boy who liked her, Hiroshi Miyano, was conveniently across the street while the whole thing happened. He came to Junko's aid and scared off the random boy. He then offered to escort her home. That was all part of the plan, bro. Dang. Everything seemed to be going as planned. While Junko didn't actually trust him, it seemed better than the alternative of possibly being attacked again. She didn't have any idea that Hiroshi harbored any sort of hatred towards her. She wouldn't have imagined that he would be planning anything like this. 
Hiroshi took Junko into an abandoned warehouse and revealed his Yakuza connections to her. He then took his time raping her over and... Whoa, 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 whoa. Called his friend... Chill, I didn't know he was gonna say the word, bro. I, I thought he wasn't... I didn't know he was gonna say the word. This video's a little old. Because I know YouTube, you cannot say that, like, now, bro. Chill, bro. Chill, bro. He, do not, like... I did not know he was gonna say, like, the actual, like, word out there. Like, the R word. I didn't know he was gonna say that, bro. Chill, 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 chill out, chill out. Friends. Joe Ogura and Yasushi Watanabe. From then on, he and his three friends took turns assaulting her. Unfortunately, this was not their first time doing this, as they had just recently done it to another girl in the past few weeks. They decided that they were having far too much fun to just set her free again. There was also the possibility that she would call the cops and tell them what happened, and they couldn't have that. The next morning, Hiroshi took Junko to a nearby park, where Joe, Yasushi, and a fourth boy, Nobuharu Minato, were waiting. They learned Junko's address and used it to threaten her, telling her that they would kill her entire family if she tried to get away. The four teenage boys then took her back to Minato's parents' home where they continued to assault her. This is where, for 42 more days, she would be held prisoner. Yo, we're only four minutes in. There's, there is 20 more minutes of this case, bro. And it's already like, wow, it's already insane, bro. No, bro, imagine, imagine having to live through that, bro. Because usually what people do is they do that, they'll, you know, and then they kill them afterwards. But she had to endure that for that long, bro. Just, that's like a month in a few days. Like, that's horrible bro like damn we're only four minutes in bro and it gets worse yo i can't even imagine having to cannot that's something you can never imagine on the third oh, day that junko was missing her parents were dealing with the police trying to get her found knowing this would happen the captors made her call her parents and tell them that she had run away and was staying with a friend safe and sound she was forced to ask her mom to stop the investigation they held Junko captive in the bedroom, forcing her to pose as one of the boy's girlfriend. It didn't take long for the parents to realize that this was a lie. Eventually, they dropped the whole girlfriend act altogether, as it was very clear that they weren't- weren't going to get in any trouble. Immediately after arriving at the home, the boys forced Junko into becoming their toy. They beat her relentlessly and raped her countless times, barely boasting chill, chill. to their friends that they had a woman trapped and ready for their personal use. They invited a load of their friends to come over and have their way with her. In the first few days, at least 30 of them raped her and- Chill, chill with the R word, but like, yo. 30 boys did that to her, bro. On top of the four dudes that were already doing that to her, bro. Oh my god, bro. Bro. 30. 30, bro. And at least a hundred knew of her imprisonment. Even women were invited to come see the spectacle with a young girl even being invited to come over and see the prisoner, who then took a pin and doodled on her face. By the day seven mark, Junko had been already completely- Bro, even women? A hundred people knew and they no one told, bro. That is just- Stripped of all of her humanity. She was forced to be naked at all times and was constantly beaten and humiliated. They would shove her into the freezer for hours when they were bored with her only pulling her out when they wanted to assault her again. Nobuharu Minato's brother and parents were living in the same house that she was being held in. His brother did nothing, aside from informing him that Junko might die at this rate. His parents were afraid to intervene as they had seen Nobuharu's violent nature firsthand. They also knew of his association with the Yakuza and feared of their possible retaliation. 
and most that's what i was gonna say i was like why didn't anyone call the police no one said anything but i know the yakuza like the 80s bro like that was and them niggas did not play on god bro them niggas then them niggas them niggas like ruled japan for like a time bro so i mean but like dude like nobody told nobody none of the people told bro that's insane they worried about losing their good reputation in the community stop stop making amazon sellers dude 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 After about 10 days of this torture, Junko's body was already starting to fail her. Because of the ongoing, endless beatings, so much blood had accumulated in her sinuses that she could no longer breathe through her nose. Hmm. Her digestive system was also beginning to refuse food and water. If she attempted to eat or drink anything, she would instantly vomit. This also led to severe dehydration. Anytime she would vomit, her attackers would get angry and beat her even further. A vicious cycle that had no end in sight. When the nights got even colder, she was forced to sleep on the balcony of the home in extreme cold temperatures, sometimes near or below freezing. Eventually, one of the men that the attackers would invite over to the house to see Junko would go on to tell someone else about her, his brother. This brother of his ended up informing the police about what was going on at the Minato house. Finally! Two officers were sued. Finally! Yo! Why did no one else say anything, bro? Finally! A hero! Out. Minato's parents came to the door. When the police explained the situation, the parents simply responded that there was no girl in the house. The police took it at face value, thanked them, and left without ever bothering to check even a single detail. After 20 days of torture, Junko was rendered completely unable to walk. She had had lighter fluid poured on her legs and set on fire, leaving her with severe burns. Her legs had also been targeted so severely during the beatings that they were left with severe muscle damage. She was unable to grip anything with her hands anymore, as they had been smashed with dumbbells to the point where her bones were crushed and her fingernails were shattered. Oh my god! Some nights later, the attackers got more rowdy than usual and ended up drinking too much. Junko took this as a chance to try to escape. She crawled down the stairs from the bedroom and reached the phone downstairs. She picked up the phone and began to call the police. The phone rang, and an officer picked up. Just as she was about to speak, Hiroshi came up behind her and grabbed the phone from her hands. He put the receiver to his ear no. and said, I dialed by mistake, hanging up the phone. She was then pulled back into the bedroom. Yo, I've never watched a video. Oh God, like I knew about this case. But I didn't think I did not ever go this deep into it. Oh my gosh, bro. I don't think I've ever watched a video that made me like, like move around and like like this bro like this is like really hard to just listen to imagine imagine like see going through it bro yo that is like that is like yo like yo they should have you know bro i know this hurt like this is like really bad to say but on god like they should have just like if they were gonna just do this to her they should have just just ended her just immediately bro because at least you wouldn't have to go through all this shit bro like like, how do you even go on after this, bro? Like, oh my god, like, it's bad, bro. She was in complete terror as she would obviously be severely punished for this. And she was correct. They punished her by holding her down and taunting her by waving a candle's flame all around her. Then they covered her entire body, mainly her legs, in lighter fluid and set her on fire once more. Afterwards, she started convulsing. The boys told everyone that she was faking it and set her on fire once again only to put it out shortly after. Somehow, she survived. From this point on, she began begging her captors to just kill her and be done with it. They wouldn't grant her that favor. After being set on fire, they discovered a new way to torture her. The boys would hold her head against the concrete while the others would jump on it. Oh. My. God, bro. One can only imagine what kind of pain and damage this would have caused. 
After about 30 days, Junko was no longer able to urinate properly. She had suffered severe damage to her genitals after they had been burned with cigarette lighters. She also had various foreign objects inserted into her. Oh, skip, 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 skip. Sure. The skip, fireworks skip. were not limited to only one orifice, as they were also inserted into her anus. Oh, yo, yo, oh my god, oh, oh my god, 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 this video, this video, yo, yo, oh my god, bro. He was nearly deaf at this point. Her hands and feet were so damaged that she could hardly move. At best, she could crawl. It took her over an hour to crawl to the bathroom. A later report showed that her brain size was greatly reduced by this point in time. Due to her hellish appearance, the boys no longer found her attractive. They used the same strategy again to abduct and gang rape another 19-year-old woman while she was on her way home from work. This is very specifically so sick, for men over 30 years old. That actually makes me sick to my stomach, bro. That, that, yo, 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 this is actually like making me sick, bro. During these 44 days of hell, Junko Furuta was forced to withstand the most unspeakable torture and suffering that a person can imagine. Some of what was done to her includes being raped many times every single day. Chill, chill, chill. Yo, 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 yo. Oh, oh my gosh, bro. Like my stream is lagging. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. R word of many times. Single day. More than 100 men. 100? 100? 100 by 100, bro. None of them said anything, bro. Constant humiliation. She was forced to be left naked most. They peed her. They peed on her too. Oh my god. She was beaten physically every day. She was beaten with golf clubs, iron rods, bamboo sticks, and various other objects. She had dumbbells dropped all over her body and her head stomped against the ground face first. She had hot wax poured all over her face with a focus on her eyelids. Her eyelids were also burned with cigarettes and cigarette lighters. She was violated with a long list of various objects mm -hmm. shoved into all orifices, mm -hmm. including but not limited. She was given only the strict bare minimum of food and water. At times, she was forced to eat cockroaches and drink urine. She had fireworks put into all of her orifices, leaving damage and severe burns. She had her left nip had dumbbells dropped all over her body. The drops on her abdomen were so hard that it caused oh her to lose all my. control of her bowels. She was hung from the ceiling and used as a punching bag. She was shoved into a freezer and kept there for hours at a time. Her eyelids were burned with hot wax and lighters when she closed her eyes in fear. Her breasts were stabbed with sewing. Her genitals were burned with started into her vagina and moved around. Completely different person after all of the damage. It was by the end she looked like a completely different person after all of the damage. It, it was oh, hard to even make it. Oh God, I could not even say. Some of that stuff I had to skip, bro. Oh God, bro. Like, dude, this is the no, yo, 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 yo. This is literally no exaggeration. No, the worst case I've ever like had to sit through, bro. No video on crime has ever made me like, have never made me like this, bro. Oh God, bro. I've seen like I've seen it. Uh, like, yo, yo, yo. I've never heard no shit like this, bro. Like I never knew people could were like this, bro. Like there's people in this world that are really like this, bro. Like this is crazy, bro. Like how could they even like see somebody like that, bro? And keep doing it. Like that's some heartless shit. That's even like it's even like I can't even say that, bro. There is way worse than that, bro. Like what the fuck? Bro? Out her facial like, features. I couldn't even her body listen to some of that shit. Her body was severely damaged and crippled, and she smelled as if she were already rotting. 
She was continuously heavily bleeding from her genitals from all of the abuse. She wheezed heavily, struggling to breathe from all of the blood accumulated in her sinuses. On day 40, January 1st, Junko woke up to New Year's Day alone. She spent the day begging to be killed, completely unable to move. Three days later, on the fateful day of the 4th of January, the boys challenged Junko to a game of Mahjong Solitaire and forced her to play. Somehow, even in her condition, she won the game. This infuriated her captors, who treated her to a severe beating with an iron barbell. Oh my god. And then poured lighter fluid all over her arms, her legs, her stomach, and finally her face, dumping lighter fluid even into her eyes. Then they put a candle to her face, igniting it all. She weakly attempted to put out the flames, but didn't have the strength to do so. This final torture lasted for a grueling two hours altogether. Already having been in a horrible condition, Junko went into shock and finally died the following day. Minato's brother called him within 20... God, at least... At the very least... She's finally put out of her misery, bro. At least 40 fucking days of this shit. This is literally the worst case I have ever heard in my life. Like, this is bad, bro. Like, I will never watch another video on this case again. It's, it's, I'll never, ever watch this shit again, bro. Like, oh God, I can't. I can't even watch it, bro. Like, this is the worst shit. I'm literally getting sick right now just hearing this shit i'm getting sick like oh god like my stomach like hurts like yo this is yo 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 it's bad yo it's so bad at least she got put out of her misery bro. at least she at least she got like i'll never like wish death but like damn like i'm happy that she got to this like she doesn't have to go to that shit no more bro she finally just Man, I hope she goes to just the, the highest place of heaven, bro, because what the fuck? 24 hours Dude. to inform him that Junko oh had God. died. The boys all rushed over to the house in a panic, fearing what would certainly be a Pack live sentence. Pack-watch pussies. I mean, the fucking niggas, these, they should not have their face sensor, man. Fuck all of these niggas. I don't give a fuck. They do not deserve to have their fucking, their, their faces. They don't deserve that, that shit, bro, at all, bro. The boys started to freak out, but they Finally. came up with a plan. The captors then put her body into a 55-gallon oil drum and filled it to the brim with concrete. A small bit of Junko's long hair was poking out the top of the concrete, something they apparently didn't notice. They disposed of the barrel at a construction site in Koto, Tokyo. Seeing that place now, you'd never imagine something like this was buried there. There was originally a good chance that the police would never find out who did this. There weren't any clues to go on. Luckily, Hiroshi is a moron. While he was being questioned by the police two weeks later involving their recent gang rape of the unrelated 19-year-old woman, he got confused and thought the police were talking about Junko, as the cases were so similar. And thinking that one of the other boys must have already confessed, he spilled the beans. He realized his mistake, but it was already too late. Yes! Where they had hit the body. Joe this nigga deserves death penalty, bro. No, don't give that nigga life in prison. No, 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 not even that, bro. You know what? I understand why people get life in prison, bro. Because, like, if you die, you get to just you get to just get off easy, like. But nah, 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 nah. Bro had already I get, been arrested I get it, I get it, for another unrelated sexual assault case. He was quickly also arrested for Junko's case as well. Yes. The other boys yes. were then arrested within the next few yes. days. Yes. Later, the oh drum God, was finally yes. opened and the concrete was broke open, revealing Junko's long deceased body in a nightmare inducing horrific condition. Junko's family was notified and told of what happened to her in detail. When her mother heard the details of what was done to her, she fainted. She ended up in a long-term stay in a psychiatric hospital. An autopsy was performed on Junko, revealing the true horror of what had happened to her. Jesus Christ. Small bottles were found still stuck in her rectal cavity. 
and it was revealed that she was pregnant, although the damage to her uterus was severe. Her face was so completely mutilated that she had to be identified by her fingerprints. Wow. Being that they were juvenile- Not even dental records, what the fuck? Else ...the court withheld the names of the four captors. But journalists from Shukan Bunshin magazine were able to find out exactly who they were and publish the names of all of them. Yes. Stating that they were inhuman and therefore didn't deserve human rights. Yes. Nobody yes. really contested this. Yes, yes. As yes. we know, they oh were Hiroshi Miyano, 18 at the time, <sighs> Joe Ogura, also 18 at the time, Nobuharu Minato, who was 16 at the time, and Yasushi Watanabe, who was 17. All four of these monsters were caught and sent to trial. During each trial, it was pretty common for onlookers to pass out upon hearing the details of the case. Even with all that they had done, they didn't really show any semblance of remorse. And despite all of this, they received extremely light sentences. For such horrific crimes. They were actually still being tried as juveniles, but after much backlash, they were changed to uh, adult status. Still, after being upgraded to adult status, they received unbelievably light sentences. Something that, to this day, continues to enrage people who hear about this case. The boys, somehow, were not charged with murder. Instead, they received a charge called causing bodily injury resulting in death. In Japan, the juvenile court system is far more focused on rehabilitation rather than punishment. Something that you'll remember if you saw my Yu-Gi-Oh! Yamaji video. Usually this means that juveniles will end up getting relatively very low sentences. Hiroshi was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Minato got a 5 to 7 year sentence himself. Watanabe got 9 years. And Joe got an 8 year sentence. One sad thing is that these monsters actually received even lower sentences than that at first. They were only increased to the still low amount after an appeal. It was so low that some people even questioned if their Yakuza ties were to blame for this. By the time of this recording, every single one of the four boys is out of jail and living free. Three of them were in jail for less than eight years. Hiroshi, the ringleader, was sentenced to 17 years originally. He tried to appeal, but as kind of a fuck you, the judge actually upped his case to 20 years. The same thing happened to two of the other boys, and after seeing enough, the fourth boy decided not to try to appeal. However, they all ended up getting out long before those sentences were actually up. And I bet you're wondering if they continued to commit crimes after they got out of jail. Well, let's see. After Nobuhara Minato got out of jail, he changed his first name to Shinji. He did this for obvious reasons. In 2006, he got married to a woman from Romania and had a daughter together. They soon divorced and the wife ended up with custody of the child. Minato couldn't stay away from murder for too long. He was eventually arrested again for the attempted murder of a businessman. The man had noticed Minato staring at him, to which he asked, what are you looking at? Minato came over and punched the man. The man then got out of his car and a fight ensued. It escalated to the point that Minato took out a baton and beat him severely. As the victim tried to get back into his car, Minato slashed his neck with a knife he had hidden. The police were called at some point and they rushed to aid the victim. In the chaos, Minato escaped. He was soon caught and arrested. He denied attempted murder, saying he only intended to beat the man. The case is ongoing. Joe Ogura was released in August of 1999. He also ended up changing his name to Joe Kamisaku. He actually had the gall to brag about his role in the kidnap and torture. His father had vowed to give their entire life savings to Junko's family out of shame, but Joe ended up taking this money and using it for himself to live a fairly extravagant lifestyle. Joe's mother wasn't much better, as she actually vandalized Junko's grave saying that it was Junko who ruined her son's life. Joe actually managed to find some women to date him. He ended up marrying a Chinese woman, but the marriage didn't last too long. Afterwards, he started dating another woman. 
He went back to prison in July 2004 for seven years for beating a guy he thought was luring his girlfriend away from him. He had kidnapped and beaten the man for four hours. He proudly told the victim that he had killed before and would do it again. He was sentenced to four years in prison. But in 2009, he was once again free, and he is still free to this day. The ringleader, Hiroshi Miyano, went right back into his previous gang activity immediately after being released from prison. He was arrested for fraud at some point after this, but didn't see jail time for it. Right now, it seems that he's living a fairly normal life. Some might even say a good life. He is a regular patron at a local kickboxing gym and appears to have a normal social life. As of now, Yasushi Watanabe is the only one of the four boys who hasn't been arrested since. Because of that, it's not really known what he's been up to. Since the investigation first started, the police have been able to get DNA from the sperm and pubic hairs found in evidence to link several more criminals to the crime, including two men named Koichi Ihara and Tetsuo Nakamura, both of whom were arrested, and there are probably many others who have not been revealed to the public. It is unknown if they will all face any sort of charges. Time will tell. So there it is, the worst case I've ever heard of. I get this question a lot, and it's, it's just always. The thing that really, like, hold on, wait till it, like, just stops lagging. Yo, the thing about that, bro, is that it's like, not only was that like the most horrific thing I've ever heard of in my life, they didn't even, they didn't even get punished for that shit, bro. And it honestly makes me sick. Like, I'm so sick right now. It's not funny, bro. Honestly, I don't know if I even keep streaming after that shit, bro. Like, sharing that shit, bro. That makes my stomach turn, bro. It's so bad. So, I did not know it was going to be that bad. And they didn't even go to jail for that long. And they're, they literally get to live normal lives. Like, are you fucking serious? Them niggas should be... If they if they got to get free, they should be berated, shamed everywhere they fucking go, bro. And it's crazy that they're, they're not, man. That shit's insane, bro. Uh, 